Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to do some more complex examples of the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. Okay. In our first example here, we have a ketone, but it also has an alkene and a chlorine substituent. So, as a reminder of our As a reminder of our nomenclature process, we need to identify the parent chain. I'm adding, if you've watched some of my simpler videos, I've skipped some of these steps, but now I'm putting them all in here. So we need to identify groups that change the suffix and infix. Then we need to number accordingly. And now we need to identify substituents. And then five is any stereochemical descriptors. Right. So our first job is to identify the parent chain. This parent chain here is a you know, this parent chain has um, five carbon atoms in it. So let's see. I'll highlight those in red. All right. And so at stage one, we would have a pentane parent chain. Stage two, we need to identify those functional groups that change the suffix and infix. So we have a ketone that changes the suffix to own and we have an alkene that changes the infix to ene. So that's going to adjust the the parent chain name from pentane to some kind of pentene own. And we're going to number the chain so that we end up with uh, locants that tell us where these things are. Right. Now at this point you're going to have to, um, oops, you're going to have to trust me here that uh, the folks who have figured out the IUPAC system have figured out a priority order for all of the functional groups and in terms of where they get numbered and how they affect the, um, and how they affect the um, infix and suffix. Right. And it turns out that in that order, ketone has higher priority than an alkene. And it almost always the oxygenated functional group has a higher priority and the, the functional group in the higher oxidation state has a higher priority. Okay. So the ketone is going to be um, higher priority. So that means now we have a pent, and this is important, I'm going to put the locants for the ene and the own inside uh, the parent chain name. If we try to put them up front, we get confused as to which one goes where. Okay. And then we need to identify the substituents. We have a chloro substituent and it's on carbon four. So now we're at four chloro pent three ene two own. And the final thing we need to do is identify stereochemistry. Okay. So we have a an alkene here. Oh, and hey, look, everything is red now. So I'm going to redraw this structure. Um, can make everything black again. redraw this structure and put in the hydrogen atom. So a reminder for alkenes, we can assign an E or Z stereochemical label based on whether the higher priority groups are on the same side or on uh, opposite sides. And in this case, uh, on carbon atom three, the ketone group has higher priority over hydrogen. And on carbon atom four, chlorine group has higher priority. So this is a Z for chloro pent 3 en 2 own. Right. This is 
this is a Z alkene. In our second example, I've put in another functional group that can change the ending of the molecule. So we have an aldehyde and an alcohol in this structure. Okay. This is a molecule that has four carbon atoms, so it's some kind of butane. We identify the aldehyde and the alcohol as functional groups that change the um, change the suffix of the molecule. The problem is, is we can't have a molecule with two different suffixes. We have to, we have, to have a, a, a single suffix. So again, as I t mentioned earlier, functional groups with higher um, oxidation states. So the key to aldehyde is more oxidized than the alcohol. So the aldehyde ends up with priority and that informs our numbering. Right, we want the high priority functional group to have the lowest possible number. Okay. And so the alcohol is at 3 and the aldehyde is at 1. And if you watched my video on the nomenclature of aldehydes, then you know that aldehydes are almost always on carbon 1. And we don't put in the 1 for the al because that aldehyde, if it's the suffix, is always at carbon 1. Now we need to identify a substituent. And if we have an alcohol as a substituent, this becomes the hydroxy substituent. Okay. So now we have a molecule that with the name 3 hydroxy butanol. And the last thing we have to do is assign stereochemistry at carbon atom number 3. Okay. So carbon atom number three, the alcohol has the highest priority and then carbon atom two and then carbon atom four. And so we would draw our arrow from three, from high OH to two to four, which is clockwise, but the lowest priority is up. So this is an S uh, configured chirality center. Okay. And so here we have S3 hydroxy butanol. Okay. The nice thing about IUPAC nomenclature system always is that there's a set of rules to follow. And as the molecules get more complicated, yes, the rules can get more complicated, but if you can follow those rules, you can put together any name. So I have one more. Uh, example, it's a cyclic ketone with two different substituents on it. Uh, and we're going to have to make some decisions about numbering here. But first, we want to start with just the parent chain. This is a, a cyclopentane, and it has a ketone in it, so it becomes cyclopentanone. All right, but now we need to figure out how to number it. I'm going to make a copy of this structure because there are um, two different ways that we could number this structure. The ketone is always going to be at 1, but we could number it clockwise so that the cyclopropyl group gets the lower number, or we could number it counterclockwise so that the isopropyl group gets the lower number. Now, you know, you've probably learned some ways to tell the difference between otherwise uh, reasonable looking locant orders, right? So like, for example, the, the numbering scheme that gives you the most possible substituents is chosen. The numbering scheme that has the lowest possible combination of locants. Well, in this case, the substituents are on two and five no matter what. So now here we have to go to an obscure rule that we don't always get to. But if you get down to this point where there are two possible choices and you can't eliminate one based on which one has the lowest combination of locants, then we have to go with right, the alphabetically first gets the lowest lo locant. 
Okay. And as a reminder, we, we get to this as, you know, this is like, like the last rule in terms of assigning locant. All right, so first we assign the, the priority functional group to the lowest possible locant, and then we assign locants to um, generate the smallest combination of locants, and then the alphabetically first gets the lowest locant. So what that means uh, is that we want to choose the arrangement on the left because cyclopropyl is alphabetically before isopropyl. Okay. And so this is 2-cyclopropyl, 5-isopropyl, cyclopentenone, and my name is wandering over into this other structure that I've drawn. So let's uh, let's clean that up. There we go. Okay. And I don't have to go any further because we've we've done all of the sub substituents. I, I put them into the I combined three and four, and we don't. Oh, but we do have stereochemistry here. So let's um, let's take care of that stereochemistry. Right. Uh, and so in this case. Um, both, let's see, so the cyclopropyl group is one, the ketone is two, the rest of the ring is three, so that's counterclockwise. So we have S at carbon two, so that's two S, and we're going to have R at carbon five. And if you, uh, I did that really quickly, so I encourage you if you want to pause the video and think about that more carefully, go right ahead. There we go. 2S, 5R, 2 cyclopropyl, 5 isopropyl cyclopentanone. Again, complex structures, but you can name these things if you can follow the rules and follow the process. All right? Thank you for watching.